is that moment again. The one you dream of every night. La seule chose qui te préoccupe, c'est la gloire. Le cheminement de la réussite. Of pushing yourself further than ever before. But the true glory is in the shadows. Les sacrifices que tu fais. Quand toutes les chances sont contre toi. When you can't push one more second. Chase the glory. Viseo. Sports on CBC, les championnats U-Sport. Brought to you in part by, vous êtes présenté par, Nike Team, Just Do It, Fettler, Baron, exclusive supplier of U-Sports championship rings. Le fournisseur exclusive des bagues de championnat U-Sport. Fox 40, celebrating a decade of the Fox 40 U-Sports Coach of the Year program. Fier partenaire des prix de l'entraîneur de l'année U-Sport depuis 10 ans. By Veraburn, proud medical supplier to university sports since 1979. Fier partenaire du sport universitaire depuis 1979. The Government of Canada. Le gouvernement du Canada. Et par Mikasa, l'étoile menton du volleyball. Le V200W, ballon officiel de U-Sport. And by Mikasa, makers of volleyball's hottest star, the V200W, the official volleyball of U Sports. In a day of marquee matchups, we present the centerpiece as the number two seed in the tournament. The hometown McMaster Marauders will take on the number seven seed, the Saskatchewan Huskies. Nope. Good evening, everybody. Steve Clark, courtside at the Burridge Gymnasium, along with Kyle Campo. And after an afternoon in which the seeds held, though Alberta did get a scare from the University of Toronto, we now have the hometown McMaster Marauders and a number seven seed that may not necessarily be a number seven seed. Not at all. You see that the University of Saskatchewan Huskies coming in as the Canada West bronze medalist, but are certainly more than capable of playing above that seven seed line. They have one of the strongest players in the country in Dylan Mortensen, led the country, led all of U Sports in terms of total kills as a right side. So a pretty impressive feat from him. And Dylan Mortensen is certainly going to be somebody that the McMaster block scheme is going to have to worry about and somebody that the Marauders are going to have to consider and think about all game long and somebody that, that the Saskatchewan Huskies are going to go to in order to generate some success here. But yeah, you're right, Steve, not necessarily a traditional seven seed um, and have uh, certainly going to put pressure here on the home side. But as we can see in the Burridge here, Going to be a pretty pro McMaster crowd. Should be a very, very exciting contest here. A sprinkling of Husky green and maybe some St. Patrick's Day green in the crowd. As for McMaster, after a late season stumble, seemed to be rounding back into form. They hit the championships after a impressive, impressive 3 0 victory over Windsor. That was a statement victory for the Marauders heading into this national championship, coming away with a Forsyth Cup sweep over the Windsor Lancers last weekend here at the Burris Gymnasium. The Marauders are confident, they're feeling good, they're feeling healthy, uh, certainly worthy of that number two seed. They are the OUA champions, and uh, like we've mentioned, it's going to be a good battle back and forth here with the Canada West bronze medalist from Saskatchewan. Um, but the Marauders more than capable of the personnel, they have the coaching and the leadership here to, uh, to make a deep run in this championship and it all starts here tonight at home against the number seven seeded Huskies. So much pressure on the hometown team, also faced with the retirement of their legendary head coach in Dave Preston. We know what the storybook ending would be. You just got to get there, and that's not going to be easy. It's going to be a path for sure, like, uh, heading into potentially what would be... Uh, I can't look past this first game first and foremost. Then again, looking ahead to a difficult path along the way, but certainly would be a, a textbook ending, as you mentioned, Steve. It would be great for, for Dave Preston to finish with a national championship here at home. 
Uh, but we kind of, when we spoke to him yesterday, sort of in the coaches' meeting, and we see in plenty of conversations in terms of talking to Dave before, uh, this is all about the athletes, all about the experience here for the Marauders faithful and getting in a good event here and trying to put up some solid results. Uh, and again, just trying to take away the spotlight a little bit of this being his last championship here. Saskatchewan in the whites with the green lettering. They're just announcing their starters. Jack Magoo, Jake Rappin, Levi Olson, Dylan Mortensen, Quinn Buchanan, and Isaiah Mamer. For McMaster, who are in the maroon and gray, Robbie Fujisawa, Mateusz Blodarski, Brendan Mills, Tyler Pavlik, Sam Cooper, Wojciech Cry, Maxime Graton, Kyle, Akeem Parks, and the former OUA Rookie of the Year will come off the bench for McMaster. Yeah, so a lot of depth to work with here, a lot of high intensity, a lot of skill at the pin positions here for the Marauders, and again, a lot of depth to work with. So a combination of a number of different personnel that will be on the floor for the Marauders is going to be important. We'll see uh, what that balance ends up looking like once things get started here. Well, we had a chance to visit with both teams. Both of these teams appear to be locked in and loaded, even during the media portion of it. So I can't imagine what's going through their minds now. A lot of nervous energy, probably. You can hear the crowd in the background. What a special moment this is. Quarterfinals. Yeah, very stoic in terms of the conversations we were having yesterday. A lot of preparation, sort of a, a, a lot of heavy focus here in terms of what's at stake. So I think the end goal is certainly here. The players are obviously going to be on the court having a great time. But uh, end goals are certainly on the horizon here for the Marauders and for the Huskies as we continue to get the, uh, the announcements of the rosters underway here in a jam-packed and noisy crowd here at Burridge. An Ontario team has not won the men's volleyball championship since 1967-68. When Ottawa did the trick, McMaster looking to change that as they will start their potential run towards gold against the extremely difficult Saskatchewan Huskies who knocked off the ranked team from Calgary, the Dinos, to get here in the bronze medal game. And as the teams go through the final paces, we'll be ready to go uh, here at the Burridge Gymnasium. I'd say overflowing, but uh, I know they didn't sell more tickets than they can, but there's not too many empty spots here. Great to see the turnout here at the Burridge Gymnasium. Again, volleyball community here to take it all in here in the national championship filling the stands here and supporting the Marauders. As Steve mentioned, a collection here supporting the Saskatchewan Huskies. But overall, just going to be a, a great weekend here at Burridge in terms of celebrating and showcasing some of the best volleyball in the country. McMaster to start with the serve, and it's the fifth-year senior from Ottawa, Mateusz Lodarski, who will get things going here at the Burridge Gymnasium. Lodarski, a second-team All-Canadian. And his serve is good, and we've started off the game with an ace. Lodarski coming straight down the line, taking the serve received, what's giving to him. He takes a bit off on the serve. It's a deep receive here by the Huskies, anticipating a hard spin, but Lodarski starts it off with a little lighter on the serve, comes in for the ace. Saskatchewan's first chance to handle it, and it's Mortensen! Blocked! Denied, and the home team is up to nothing. Not the best pass on receive. They try to go high ball to the outside and get Mortensen involved early here out of the backcourt. Marauders do a triple close to this left side. Great contact on the block, drops in. Two nothing, Marauders. A defense anchored by six foot ten Tyler Pavlik. Ladarski into the net, and the surf will go to Saskatchewan as they put a crooked number on the scoreboard. First serve coming back here for the Huskies is going to be Jacob Rappin. See if he can steal some points from the line here and get some momentum back on the side of the Huskies. Six foot five, fifth year senior. The lefty floats one in. Fujisawa, Cooper! And that was handled well by Ethan Smith. And then the point will go to McMaster. Huskies called on the double. They get caught out of system trying to get a high ball set to the left side pin. Comes off a little bit too messy from the set there from, from Mamer. And they're going to call him on the double. Tyler Pavlik 
a somewhat unorthodox serve that sometimes catches teams by surprise. Cooper with a block along with Cry. They set it up to Mortensen. And Mills is there. Cooper! And it's a miscommunication between Rapid and Olsen. Point to McMaster. Saskatchewan trying to get Mortensen involved on the left side. We know he swings mostly and predominantly out of the right side as an opposite. But in this rotation, trying to get some reps in from that left side before they can switch over. But yeah, the miscommunication, the difference there as the point goes to Mack. Pavlik floats one over. They set it up in the middle and utilize Magoo. Cooper. Olsen didn't do much with it. Cry with the short set. And it's 5-1 Marauders. A lot of off, a lot of off speed so far in terms of the offense as the Huskies take a timeout. But a lot of off speed attacking so far, Steve, from the side from Saskatchewan, giving the Marauders a little bit easy stuff to work with defensively. Obviously, those are shots that are going to fall in at different times throughout the match. But a lot of off speed stuff early on here from Saskatchewan's making it defensive transitions a lot easier. And the Marauders have taken full advantage and come back with plenty of attacks off the arm and the shoulder of Sam Cooper. And if Saskatchewan wanted to take the crowd out of the game early, they were unsuccessful in doing so with their play. That's what they're hoping to do with the timeout. Yeah, the only point that the Huskies have earned so far has been on the service error from Ladarski. So certainly going to talk it over. Sean McKay, the head coach of the Huskies, trying to talk things over with his group here. As you said, maybe settle things down, reset a little bit. First five points, you think about a set going to the t that 25 point mark and that five, five point chunks in that five set. So it's already gone the first way through here and the Huskies need to try to talk things over, get it settled down a little bit, but certainly have the personnel and the experience to do so playing in that tough Canada West Conference. Their coach, Sean McKay, familiar to Ontario basketball fans. He played five years with Western University. Has been with the program off and on since 2018. And there's an interesting story with that that we'll get into later. Pavlik remaining on the serve. Tried some pace. Service error back to Saskatchewan. Call that a coach's point. Sean McKay taking the time out and freezing the server from the line. Goes into the net. Two service errors thus far in the early stages of this opening set for the Marauders. Levi Olsen, 59 aces this season. High toss, big serve. And Ladarski from the back. Good diving play made by Rappin. Mortensen gets on the board. Second look at the attack there coming from Mortensen. Great push to the outside. They seal the triple block again. They're gonna have that a lot as they try to neutralize the attack from Mortensen, but is able to take advantage. Great cut coming from that right side to catch the inside of the block, drop to the open floor. Olsen, power serve. Cooper handled it. Fujisawa, boy Mills, he struggled with it, but did what he could to get the point for McMaster. Excellent adjustment by Brendan Mills. Fujisawa pulled in a little tight on serve receive. Has to just try to keep the ball above the tape and Mills with a great white. Excellent fix there by the right side for the Marauders. Mills with 40 kills in McMaster's three playoff games as he delivers a third service error for the Marauders. See if McMaster can get settled back from the line and continue to steal points there. They've done a, done a great job in system and out of system on their attack so far, uh, but have to try to rein in some of those service errors. Here's six foot nine, Jack Magoo on the serve. That one will drift long and the serve going back to McMaster. Service error this time from the Huskies gives one back to the Marauders. They get their three point cushion restored here. 7-4, Cooper back to serve is one of the strongest servers in the country. See if he can put the defense on their heels here. Just five regular season games. He came back and played all three playoff games. Cooper goes a little off speed. And they set it up in a block. That's the attempt by Isaiah Mamer. McMaster's defense standing tall. Good swing by Mamer, but just comes back and clips off the block and makes contact with his body on the way back through. It's a tough break there. Found hands, I think it was maybe intentional in terms of trying to locate those hands on the swing. Takes a tough break back off his body and out of play. Cooper with the high toss and the power, it's an ace! That 
that's the threat that Sam Cooper brings. We know how strong he is as an attacker in the front row and out of the pipe as well. But if you can be that aggressive from the service line and find some great efficiency and add that to the point total, it's going to be really tough for the Huskies to deal with if he can keep this rolling. If that ball was traveling on the QEW, Kyle, it'd be caught for speeding. That's how fast that was. They set it up for Mortensen, and it's long. And McMaster rolling so far in the first quarter, 10-4. Tough break there by the Huskies. It looked like Mortensen may have clipped hands on the block coming through. Great response by the Huskies on that serve receive. Able to get a clean pass up after the strong ace on the previous point there from Cooper. He, uh, but the point does, in fact, go to the Marauders. They're up 10-4 early on here. Cooper, that one will go long and uh, McMaster will give up the serve. Sometimes that's what you get with Sam Cooper. Go big or go home, right? Seems like that is the case with a lot of the spin servers, especially when you hit it so high and so hard that Cooper does. High risk, high reward, certainly for sure. Mortensen goes off speed. Short set try! Second look at the attack there is who just saw with a great set to the inside and Cry just has to turn that outside shoulder a little bit to try to make the cut around the block. A little bit too much as it comes wide of the floor. But you saw Dave Preston giving a thumbs up and Fujisawa, a great set to the inside to see if they can keep that middle rolling. And so Mortensen into the net, 11-6. I thought that Cry shot had gone in, but that's the pace it was hit with. Certainly really close, again, Cry opening up there and trying to cut to the outside and try to paint the tee to the near sideline and he'll go back to serve now 11-6. Woj Cry, six foot ten. In the middle they go to Quinn Buchanan and now Saskatchewan starting to get established. Good inside set there by the Huskies as they set Buchanan out of the middle. If Saskatchewan's gonna continue to chip away here, the Marauders know and we've seen that they've closed triple on the outside to Mortensen a lot. They're going to have to get the middle established here. Isaiah Mamer handled by Cooper. Here's Mills, and he thunders one right through Ethan Smith. Great set again to the outside. The Marauders doing a great job. Cooper's keeping everybody in system with a strong touch on serve receive. And they just find Brendan Mills coming out of the back row. Great sea ball attack. They're up 12 7. Robbie Fujisawa has actually delivered 10 aces this year. It's a sneaky floating serve he likes to deliver. Mortensen and the reaction by Matthew Ragosi, and over it goes. Here's Olsen. Cooper, oh, what a block in the middle. Quinn Buchanan sends it back. That comes out of the pipe to Cooper. Great read in terms of that pipe blocking coming through. Saw the Huskies getting a little frustrated throughout the rally there, thinking that the, the ball had come to the outside of the antenna and that there was contact from the back row. Things not working out in their favor from the logistical standpoint in terms of getting calls, but they win the point nonetheless in an excellent block. Off speed and misdirection from Pavlik, and it's 13 to 8. Smart heads up play there by Pavlik, just taking a bit of pace off the ball. They run the set nicely out of the middle. We saw Cry swinging with some pace out of the middle, and Pavlik more than capable of doing the same thing. But a great find in the defense, unable to pick it up. Ladarski will take his second turn at the service line. And Saskatchewan's already scrambling, and look out. Olsen has them all scattered on the McMaster bench. <laughs> Olsen just trying to find hands on that attack there and get contact on the block because that ball is still in the air, I think, Steve. But just <laughs> a lot of pace underneath the ball, unable to get any snap on it. Trying to find hands to win the point, but unable to do it that time through. McMaster, 14-8, they lead. Cry, just long. And McMaster serve at times, Kyle, a little bit inconsistent here in this first set. Giving up a few service errors for sure, but I have to give credit to this the serve approach. They try to put a lot of service pressure on this receive by the Huskies. And they've stolen some points from the line as well. The lefty wrapping on the serve. They'll set it up for Mills, and that's a great block, Olsen. Set to that right side as Mills is trying to swing away, but Jack Magoo framing the block a little bit inside having Mills forced to go to the outside and not able to turn down the line based on his body position. Good contact on the block, drops to the open floor. Fujisawa, here's Cooper. Rapid for Mortensen and 
Martinson from the right side, and Saskatchewan has crept within three, 14-11. Smart play by Mortensen. It's a tight ball. They're anticipating a hard, heavy swing from him, as he's known to do, but just takes a little bit off there with a throw tip, finds the hands on the block, and earns a point. They're back within three. Fujisawa just bunted over, really, by Ladarski. Short set, and Magoo buries that one. Get a second look there as Rappin does an outstanding job, Steve, as he's facing the net, still able to run the run the offense and stay in system as we're going to get a timeout called by the Marauders as Dave Preston will try to settle down the team and get them back rolling. But full credit goes on that on that rotation by Jacob Rappin. Staying in tight to the net is tough and trying to get parallel there so he can still stay in system, see across the net in terms of when he tries to run offensively, and they convert out of the middle. Great job there. Four straights for Saskatchewan sending McMaster to timeout. Quickly, Sean McKay, the coach, he was the coach of Saskatchewan. Their other coach was fired after allowing a recruit with a criminal record to attend Saskatchewan. Then that coach filed a lawsuit, won that lawsuit, that bumped McKay out. The other coach immediately retired and McKay was back in, so it was a tumultuous off-season for Saskatchewan. Tumultuous to say the least for sure, but this group just more than happy of putting any distractions away and focusing on the volleyball and what the, stat, the task that's at hand here. Uh, and again, they've done a great job chipping away. They were down substantially at the sort of midway point of this set and have done a great job closing and chipping away and not letting the Marauders crowd here and then the high intensity and the firepower that they have offensively to kind of push them around. They've done a great job closing. McMaster still up by two, 14-12. We saw the success after Saskatchewan took a timeout. See if it comes the same way with the Marauders this time. Saskatchewan was almost knocked out of their quarterfinal against BC. They faced a match point after losing the first game withstood that, withstood another one, and won 34-32 in the fourth set. So they're battle-tested, and that's an understatement. Certainly, as it always are in that Canada West Conference. Not to say other conferences aren't, but a lot of quality competition. From the back, it's Ladarski. And that was well scouted by Saskatchewan, but it sails wide. So McMaster with a 15-12 lead and the serve back. Kirkhoff coming, doing a nice job coming close to the baseline, tracking that ball to make sure it doesn't back go out of play. Marauders back up by three on that pipe attack by Lundarski out of the back row. Tyler Pavlik. Six foot ten. Tough serve to handle. They go to Olsen. Ladarski, Fujisawa with the great save, and Mills gets it over. Here's Mortensen, Fujisawa spectacular, Mills dropped it over. Mortensen, and again it's Fujisawa diving. Here's Mills to finish. And we go on with this point, Cooper! It's up high and it remains in play as Smith did the job. And then a big block at the net. What a point! Cooper, and it belongs to McMaster. That's why we're here to see the best volleyball in North America. They set to that left side, the triple block seals there on Mortensen. Tough break again, mid-rally there for the Huskies as they were looking for a lift call on the outer system ball. But great defensive scramble on both sides of the net. Outstanding rally, and that's sort of a microcosm here of what we can expect the rest of the weekend. Back set, and Olsen catches Pavlik off guard, and it's 16-13. Great swing and response there by Olsen on the right side. Again, spends most of his volume on the left, but gets caught in a few rotations, swinging from the right side. Drops that inside shoulder, able to swing down the line to the outside of the block set by Cooper. Olsen has got that big serve, but too big this time. The service error will send it back to McMaster. They got Brendan Mills back to the service line here, meaning they got Fujisawa in in front hands. We'll see if they try to utilize the pipe from Vladarski out of this rotation. They've only got two attackers in the front row in this, this sequence here. High toss by Mills, and he drops it in. Net battle, and kept alive by Fujisawa again. Cooper. And off the violation, it goes to Saskatchewan, and it's a very unhappy Saskatchewan bench. Mortensen on his way over to talk to the official. Is guilty of the double touch, certainly were the Huskies, but it's a tough call, to, or non-call, so to speak, here. As, again, the Huskies have felt as though they've earned the last couple of points as they'll take a timeout to try to talk things over. Maybe the first sequence through. 
but certainly uh, more than worthy of having that conversation with the up official to try to get some clearance. Again, the violation called on the Huskies, certainly a double touch, but maybe they felt as if they didn't get the call they were looking for earlier on in the rally. How much to those wild scramble points, Kyle, emotionally boost a team? Is it a short-term boost or can you carry that momentum further? So that's sort of with any rally for sure. It can sort of be a, a, a boost to push you through and get some momentum back in that current moment. And then if the crowd certainly stays a part of that as a result of that rally, can certainly stay with the team moving forward. But as you think about it point to point and, and set to set, obviously a difficult piece to navigate, but that's the message that we're likely gonna be hearing from the Huskies in this timeout. Uh, but certainly those are rallies that happen, you know, four, five, six times throughout a match. And if you can win and get on the plus side of those throughout the course of that, can certainly make the difference in terms of winning and losing a set and thus winning and losing a match. So Saskatchewan will utilize their second timeout and last timeout of this first set. So McMaster, they lead 18 to 13 and they've got Brendan Mills on the service line. Three dropped in deep in service, Eve. Expect a hard spinner up coming here. Great serve. It's an ace. There's nothing Olsen could do with that one. Great serve by Mills, able to come across. He's sort of in, in that seam between one and six in terms of his release and serve. Maybe closer to the sixth position, but does a good job coming across his body and picking away Olsen there in serve receive. Let's see if he can do it again. Another booming serve. Here's Mortensen, and again defended well by Crying Cooper. And another big block as Isaiah Nehmer tried it from the left side. 20 to 13, McMaster. Easy read there for the Marauders block. They knew that Mortensen had just taken second hands and that he was going to be out of the equation in terms of the attack. Only one option, press to the left side. Cry if Fujisawa closed nicely. Get great contact over the tape, able to convert for the point. It's 20 to 13. So Mills remains on serve. And then Mills gets on top of that one, and it goes way long. The Marauders certainly happy with that run, though, from Brendan Mills from the service line. They had a few points of separation and then stole three points from the line there from Mills. Big Jack Magoo. Cooper. Yes. Emmett Graham was standing on the back line. Couldn't do anything with it. 21-14, Cooper to serve. And Cooper for that one, we know how well he can attack in terms of his shot selection and being able to pick a point seems in terms of the block scheme. That time just jumped higher than the block was set. Impressive job there by Cooper. Goes OT and able to come across on that as 21-14. So Cooper. That one misfired badly into the lower portion of the net. Dylan Mortensen to take the serve. 32 aces this year. Six foot eight, fifth year student. High toss, but he drops it long though. The toss didn't look right from the beginning, did it? No, I think Mortensen just lost a little bit in terms of the toss there. Whether he was trying to go with a hybrid and maybe catch the serve receive off a little bit, then really didn't have much option at that point and just had to just make contact and get it over. Too much of a float on it gets underneath the ball and goes well out the back. Situational substitution brings Peter Ragosi in, and he is a big server for McMaster. Older brother of Matthew Ragosi, a libero for the Marauders. That time he goes off speed. Mortensen. Mortensen finds the back line on the sea ball, but yeah, they bring in the su serving substitution in Ragosi at 22-15 at the point of serve, and again, has a hard, aggressive serve, but does take a little bit off of that. Maybe the, the game plan there from the Huskies and the identification and seeing some film on Ragosi as that serving sub knew that that was coming, and he wanted to take a little bit off, but Huskies win the point nonetheless. It's 22-16. Mortensen coming off a 24-kill performance in the bronze medal victory over Calgary. Here's Mamer with the serve. Free ball opportunity. Mortensen, yes! And you don't want him to get going. 
Great patience though in the free ball transition on the overpass from Cooper. The Huskies, instead of trying to make a contact and make play up at the tape, settle it in and allow their offense to run its course naturally and get the ball on the shoulder of their biggest attacker in Mortensen out of the sea ball. Cooper returns, Mamer serves, short set! And delivered by Cry, or Pavlik, excuse me, 23-17. Great set that time by Fujisawa as he leads Pavlik in nicely and Pavlik just able to take advantage. He drops his left, left shoulder coming across, opens up that shoulder inside and goes off the hands. Fujisawa, here's Mortensen, off the block, McMaster opportunity. Great defense by Saskatchewan led by Quinn Buchanan. And now they're in full scramble mode. Mortensen tried to drop it in. Here's Ladarski and big defense. Buchanan and Rappin. It's Rappin who will get credit. Bit sloppy in the free ball transition there for the Huskies, but they are able to come away and get the point with a big block at the net. They're able to read and come to that left side and close on Matthias Ladarski. But could have been trouble had the Marauders been able to take advantage of that miscue on the free ball transition from Saskatchewan. Quinn Buchanan. Here's Mills. Set point for McMaster as Mills is delivering. Great angle on the cut there. Fujisawa with a great push to the outside. And Mills, just on the, on the angle he was there for, able to cut to the outside of that block. Able to pack coming across defensively. And it's set point here for the Marauders. See if Ladarski can close it out here for Mack. Well, he opens the match serving. He looks to close it. At least the first set portion. Magoo can't finish the point. Here's Cooper in the middle. Great pancake by Mortensen. And then winning the net battle is Levi Olsen. And Saskatchewan fights on in the first set. Great effort there defensively by the Saskatchewan Huskies. Able to get underneath and get a good pop on the touch right down close to the floor. It actually keeps the Huskies in system on that, able to run an offense out of it. Uh, and then the battle of the net and the joust won by Saskatchewan. Fujisawa, Cooper. And that'll do it for set number one. McMaster 25, Saskatchewan 19. The set from Fujisawa, a little bit pushed to the outside as Cooper has to adjust from his right to his left, but then kind of eats up the block a little bit on that press in between. Finds enough of a seam where the Huskies were unable to actually convert and get some contact on it there. But a great closeout to the set there by the Marauders. They withstood the run back from Saskatchewan 25-19. St. Patrick's Day here at McMaster. Back with set number two after this on CBC Sports. And we are back inside the Burridge Gymnasium, a sold out or close to it crowd here for the marquee matchup of the day between the number two seed, the McMaster Marauders, and the number seven seed, the Saskatchewan Huskies. McMaster, Kyle, front runners throughout the set. They win 25 to 19. What did you see? It's a good battle back and forth. The Marauders started off early. They used the advantage of the crowd here and forced the Saskatchewan, Saskatchewan Huskies into an early set timeout. The Huskies able to kind of trade the rest of the way to the midway point and McMaster had sort of a, a, a stranglehold midway through that set. Um, but then after the second timeout taken by the Huskies, able to settle it down nicely and kind of claw their way back into it. Um, never really felt like it was out of, the, out of reach for the Marauders or that, it was, that the set was maybe out of their grasp. Um, but a good fight from the from the Huskies nonetheless for sure as we'll have a look through and 
I think a big piece for the Huskies moving into this second set is trying to get a little more efficiency out of the attack from Dylan Mortensen, who was hitting at only zero, so only seven, sorry, 7.1% in that opening set. So he had four kills and three total errors on 14 total attacks. Certainly will be a focal point for the Huskies, getting him a little bit more efficient and getting some more volume to him in that second, the second set. Half of the total attacks went through Mortensen, as expected. I don't think that's a surprise to anybody. No, he's certainly one of the best players in the country and recognized as such as a first-team All-Canadian here at the U Sports Men's Volleyball Banquet that was held here in Hamilton last night. But certainly uh, a focal point of the defensive scheme for the Marauders, as we saw plenty of times where the Marauders were able to seal and close that triple block on the outside and force Mortensen to either try to go over top of the block or navigate some of the angles or, or, or have some more off-speed stuff. Um, but certainly a focal point from the Marauders in that opening set and in the game plan coming in was trying to negate Dylan Mortensen. And they did a really nice job of that in the opening set. Well, the resiliency of Saskatchewan will be tested once again as they fall behind one set to nothing. And Jake Rappin will deliver the first serve of set number two. Cooper Fujisawa, back it goes to Cooper. And great defense there. Boy, Magoo was up there, Morton was up there, and Cooper got denied. That's the biggest block combination that the Huskies have is that combination there of Mortensen and Magoo. They try to get it and match him up so that they line up with Sam Cooper, and just the block won that battle. I'm sure Cooper will respond next time through. Rappin the lefty. That serve dipped at the last minute. Mortensen, he gets denied as Pavlik lengthens. Pavlik closing to the outside and getting that block framed with Sam Cooper. It's a little bit late getting there, but actually worked out in their favor. This is the late close on the throw tip from Mortensen. It's a little bit more off speed. Pavlik able to close it, gets contact over top of the tape and drops it to the open floor. Good read by Pavlik. Pavlik, the second team OUA All-Star on the serve. And Levi was, or Levi Olson was set up on the right side, not comfortable position, and it's point for McMaster as it was wide. 167 attack from the first set from Levi Olson, somebody that the Huskies will certainly try to get more involved as well. Only had six total attacks in that opening set. So we talked about the serve or the setting volume that went towards Mortensen. Olson gets that one over Fujisawa, and it goes over Fry. And I'm not sure if there was a miscommunication or it was a poor set. Regardless, it's 2-2. Fujisawa either trying to lead Cry to the inside, maybe having that conversation right now. Could maybe have been a decoy to set over top of Cry to get Cooper open on that left side, but such a, a big frame from Woj Cry in order to try to navigate around. Levi Olsen on the serve, handled by Cooper, and finished by Cooper. Outstanding sequence all the way through by Sam Cooper. Great pass on serve received. Fujisawa pushes to the outside. We saw them running cry on that last time, so the middle has to neutralize a little bit. Can't commit to one side over the other. Leaves it a little bit open to the outside for Cooper. Mills to serve. Rappin sets it up for Magoo. And off the block, we're tied at three as Magoo is able to get some power behind it. A yeah, good read there by Jack Magoo, seeing this just a solo block and trying to navigate around Cries in that sort of one spot there and taking it away, but Magoo able to navigate around it. Good job there. That one looked like it's in. Yes, it is. It's an ace. Beautifully placed serve by Jack Magoo. Ben Kirkhoff thought maybe that one was coming wide of the court. Has communication behind him and Brendan Mills is why they have that right side tucked away here. But it was a tough serve nonetheless, whether that was going to be passed up or not. Kirkhoff had to dive. Mills, well defended by Rappin. Mortensen, oh, it was blocked by Cry. Cooper, off the block, 4-4. Four -four. Fujisawa pushes to the outside and gets Cooper involved as well. Sort of the, even with the block scheme, probably knowing where that ball was going to be set, still not a whole lot you can do when Cooper gets so explosive and gets over top of the block and able just to use hands, goes off and comes out of play. Cooper, who came to watch McMaster games as a middle schooler and dreamed of playing on this court and being coached by Dave Preston, he serves. And it knocks Smith backwards, short set. And a great play by Fujisawa to keep it going. 
Buchanan with his second opportunity would not be denied. Yeah, good job in transition there by the Huskies. They try to stay in system as much as possible. Fujisawa gets that roll coming off the wrist and they send it back over on the free ball, which put the Huskies in a prime position to run an attack and they take advantage. So Dylan Mortensen, the first team All-Canadian. Beautiful serve. Fujisawa takes it off the net and the free hit is found money for Jake Rappin. Rappin reading it nicely, he kind of saw the marauder side maybe thinking that he had penetrated across the tape a little bit too early, but I don't know if there was any real understanding of the fact that maybe there was that second contact coming across there, so it was going to be third contact anyway. So good read there by Rappin, able to get up on top of that ball. Mortensen just drifts one over, short set for Cry, and goodness me, ferocious. And that's one way to respond by the Marauders is getting Cry in the middle attack rolling and on a light serve coming through, basically almost as if it was a sort of that free ball transition type and that serve is the Marauder is able to run it out of the middle and get Cry involved as a hammer of a ball. Cry serve is the very opposite of a hammer as it's an error. <laughs> yeah, short ball there by Cry, maybe had a little bit too much energy and momentum after that last kill and Maybe tried to harness it a little bit too much and not be too fired up, but comes a little bit short, goes into the net, two-point lead restored. Isaiah Mamer clips the net, but it's in play. Cooper from the middle. And Cooper is finding his rhythm. Great job there by Sam Cooper. Such a tough pace to navigate as you're running out of the backcourt and trying to find where that attack line is set up. He's still able to do a good job staying behind it and still keeping his body control to be able to make an attack off of that and win. Again, great shot there by Cooper. Fujisawa, an effective serve because Saskatchewan is all scrambling and Havlik gets it over. Mortensen for Olsen and the triple block for McMaster. Olsen will try again and he's unsuccessful a second time, tied at seven. Such a tough piece to navigate as a left side, especially when that triple block is coming across there, and especially with the size of the blockers that they have in the front row, when you consider Vladarski, Mills, and Pavlik closing together, really not a ton to swing through, and the Marauders take advantage of it there, forcing it to the outside. They set it up for Martinson and Fujisawa a little frustrated with himself. He thought he was in position, but he couldn't handle it. Cer certainly was in a good position as they set that right side ball to Mortensen who comes across. Fujisawa certainly there in a position. His platform was set, maybe just took a, a roll off the arms that he wasn't expecting. Here's Quinn Buchanan. Fujisawa for Mills. And Mills, that was spicy to tie it at eight. Great attack and response there by Brendan Mills. Again, we have a couple of sequences throughout each rotation where guys that are typically on the right are swinging from the left and vice versa. But when you have so much control in terms of your shot selection and can find power from either pin, it makes such a difference and now the Marauders are tied. Lodarski on the serve. They set it up for Mortensen who comes sailing in. Great play by the libero Matthew Ragosi. From the back with authority, Isaiah Meemer. Here's a look at that last run here by the Huskies. And one thing to see there, Steve, is you see Rappin. He takes a little bit of a look to see what's across the net, to see where the blocks are set up and where he's going to run his offense. It's a tough thing to navigate, especially with the ball coming so fast and those decisions happening very quickly, but able to see what's happening on the Marauder side of the net before setting the ball. Cooper to finish, and he goes off speed, and it's alive. Nope, they're going to call it. On the fourth hit, I believe, tied at nine. Just a feather touch to the outside of the block there by Cooper as they frame a little bit inside and giving the line to Sam Cooper. Just a little poke there does the trick, getting the Huskies defense scrambling a bit. Here's Pavlik on the serve. Net battle and Cry gets up there. Cry off the short set. He missed. No contact on the block there as Cry 
was set inside again and trying to take advantage of where that ball was led from Fujisawa. And again, maybe tried to find hands late there if he didn't see the path that he was looking for in the attack, but unable to find it, hits it out of bounds. Olsen on the serve, and it's a powerful one. Here's Mills. Did that one get hands? It did. Oh, nope, they're gonna rule it not getting hands. It's 11-9, Saskatchewan. The up official's calling it that there was contact, so we'll see here. He's looking at the down official to get confirmation, so the score is gonna navigate back to 10-10, but great job on receive that time through by the Huskies, unable to take advantage of it. They still try to get the scoreboard navigated here, but they say contact off the attack. I thought the official had it for McMaster. They haven't changed the... It should be 11-10 to 10 for Saskatchewan once they get the serve sorted out. Or did they just replay the points? No, they're still still trying to fix it here. Yeah. You see Dave Preston and the assistant coaching staff here trying to navigate the tables. You see the, the table official kind of just settling everybody down here and trying to get it. should be... 11-10, actually, I think. 11-10 is what we thought the score yeah. was, and they're, now they have it correct. And the steely glare of Dave Preston can now focus on the court instead of the scorer's table. <laughs> Magoo with the serve. Kirkhoff handles it. Here's Mills. That one's long. Off the block, boy. The ge generated power by Brendan Mills is on full display. And Mills may have actually found a seam within the block as well. It may have actually gone off the head of the Huskies block and out of play. Tied at 11 here, but great job and a great set and a half thus far by Brendan Mills. Here's Sam Cooper. It's 11-11 and number 11 on the serve. And he has been inconsistent here this evening with the serve. Back to Saskatchewan 12-11. Mortensen back to the service line here for the Huskies. Again, he's been a little bit off pace in terms of his serving so far. We'll see if he kind of ramps it up a little bit to try to steal some points and get a little bit of mid-set separation here for the Huskies. Mortensen, the high toss, and that one is long as the team's trade service errors. We talked about the importance of Mortensen as well and wasn't overly effective in that opening set, but led the country 5.2 points per set, which is a staggering number for anybody, let alone as an opposite, and he's done a great job this season. We'll try to get him more involved here in the second. Great job by Quinn Buchanan, who had to adjust a little bit as he jumps to give Saskatchewan the points. You see Fujisawa talking to Coach Preston here about a couple of adjustments he wanted to make on that point through and see if he installs those on the next couple. Isaiah Mamer. Here's Mills. They go to the hot hand and Mills again. Great find again by Fujisawa to come to the right side and Mills able to take that body control and finding and knowing the reps of where that attack line is here in the Burridge Gymnasium. Able to take advantage, goes high contact off the hands again. Fujisawa on the serve. Mortensen a little frustrated as all he could do is put it over. Here's Ladarski, and McMaster has a lead here in the second set. Good to see you in the swing there by Matthias Ladarski. Able to find the seam to the outside and able to convert for the attack and Ladarski gives the lead to the Marauders. Mortensen, that's hit long, and it's 15 to 13 for McMaster, and you wonder if Sean McKay's thinking about a timeout. Yeah, the momentum's certainly shifting in favor of the Marauders here. It's a tough piece to navigate there, as the teams are certainly still tight here midway through, and you don't want to necessarily burn those timeouts when they can solve it on the floor. Mortensen, big block. Olsen, bigger block! is having himself a game. And now Saskatchewan will take a timeout. And certainly the time to do so after an emphatic block there by Brendan Mills, again able to navigate, close into the inside and force the attack from these Huskies to go basically directly into the block or else it was gonna go navigated out of the block to the outside. So great job again. We've talked about how important Mills has been to the success of the Marauders here so far. Uh, yeah, certainly in the mix as you know, an early favorite maybe for player of the game for the Marauders side, but 
A good timeout taken here, though, by the Huskies to try to settle it down. They did have a bit of a lead, Steve. Uh, saw it a little bit evaporate, and now the Marauders are starting to earn some points here uh, and not relying solely on, on some of the errors and the, the attacking errors and some of the service errors uh, where they were able to get some of those points early on in the first set. Uh, but again, a great job by McMaster offensively trying to claw their way back in here, take the lead, and uh, are certainly in a great position Thanks largely to their block scheme, their attacking's been great, serve receiver's been great, and getting everybody involved in the offense right now. And in the absence of Maxime Graton, it is Brendan Mills who has stepped up and maximized his minutes. And that has been so impressive and such an integral part of McMaster's success the postseason. Yeah, again, we talked about how important Mills is to the overall success here. As we see a lot of high volume when Cooper's healthy and on the floor and being able to push to the outside, whether it's to Cooper, to Vladarski, to Graton, but having Mills being as effective, if not more so in terms of his efficiency, is a huge plus for the Marauders offense. Fujisawa still on the serve. Here's Olsen, again blocked. Mortensen sets it up for Olsen. It's a bit of a free ball. Fujisawa to Pavlik. Great scramble by Smith and Mortensen into the net. And Saskatchewan couldn't save it. Outstanding rally and sequence from start to finish on the Marauder side of the net. They're able to read everything in the block, able to try to stay tight into the tape on some of the out of system high balls that were coming from the Saskatchewan side of the net. They're able to keep it relatively calm and then able to convert out of that 17 13. Great job by Mac. Fujisawa. Smith and then the short set and a great save made by Kirkhoff. Here's Olsen and again it's the McMaster defense and it's Brendan Mills again. Can't say anything more about this, the game so far from Brendan Mills as he closes there with Pavlik once again. And I think that the Husky is going to make a transition. They're making a substitution here and maybe getting to some different looks on that left side as Olsen just hasn't been able to find the attack so far here, Steve. Fujisawa still serving and a rare mistake by the second-year setter Fujisawa will send the serve back to Saskatchewan. Yeah, and maybe just trying to continue and build on that energy that the Marauders have generated over the last five or six points. Fujisawa, as we said, usually a very consistent hard float server, just a little bit too light on that one, clips of tape. Oh, Buchanan looked like he got all crossed up on that serve. Not one you want to put in the training manual. <laughs> no, just a lost it a little bit on, in terms of the toss there, came across his body and maybe didn't get the contact he was looking for, had to make that adjustment throughout the process of getting that serve started. Here's Lodarski. Good serve handled well by Smith. And the lefty down the line and Emmett Graham inserts himself into the proceedings. Pretty unorthodox to see a lefty swinging from that left side, obviously in terms of navigating where they are on the floor with that particular rotation. But a great job by Graham to open up and with that block set inside, able to turn down the line. Neymar on the serve, Fujisawa, short set, Pavlik. Off the serve here from the Huskies, Fujisawa with a great job to find Pavlik inside. And we've talked about how dangerous the Marauders are when they've got Mills running from the right and both of their left sides hitting well from the pin. But when you get these middles going as well with Pavlik and Cry, really tough to answer defensively for whoever's on the other side of the net. Pavlik, a lollipop of a serve. And Mortensen improvised, it looked like, in midair, but it did the job, and it goes back to Saskatchewan, 20 to 16. Great fix there by Mortensen, seeing the block just by, just only Mills set up on the block that time. Ball was kind of coming over a little bit too far to the pin and a little bit over top of the tape, but Mortensen, just so athletic, able to wipe it off the block. Lefty with a big serve, Emmett Graham in the middle of the cry, and that's well defended. Across. And a great reaction, but not enough done by Kirkhoff to keep it in the court. 20 to 17, Saskatchewan again claws their way back into the set. Yeah, they've done a great job. They've been persistent and resilient, able to fight their way through. We talked about a number of times in terms of the competition that they've seen and the moments that they've been able to try to fight back with their season on the line in the playoffs. Similar to it here. From the back, it's... Ladarski, they go to the veteran when they need it. 
That whole play, start to finish, happens because of Matthias Lodarski. Spectacular job and serve receive from number six for the Marauders. Gets great contact and receive. And then Fujisawa rewards him for a clean pass. Running the pipe and Lodarski converts. Thomas Williams in as the situational server. Mortensen, great diving play made by Matthew Rogosi. Here's Cooper. Did that hit hands? It sure did. 22-17 for McMaster. Again, a great run to the outside to Cooper. That'll force Sean McKay to take the timeout here for the Huskies. But again, a great job to the push to the outside to find Cooper. And the McMaster offense so far through almost two sets here, Steve, kind of firing on all cylinders. We mentioned, again, obviously with Brendan Mills and what he's been bringing defensively from the net in terms of his block and then running out of the C-ball and running the right side balls. But everybody kind of getting involved, and it's big to see running their offense out of the middle, uh, which again opens things up a lot for their left side attackers. You know, McMaster can run so deep with those big hitters, whether it's from the outside with Mills and Cooper, the middle with the six foot 10 Twin Towers, Pavlik and Cry. They, they can be relentless. And as you said, when they're on like they are so far tonight, it's difficult to defend. It's really tough to defend for sure. And that just generates a lot of energy and momentum when they are able to kind of get those big blocks or they're able to kind of steal a point or two from the line with an aggressive serve. Just opens things up, a lot of confidence and a lot more looseness and a lot more freedom in terms of their attack. And when they get going with that, it is really tough for them to slow down. But again, as we've seen from the Huskies, every time that they've kind of had an opportunity to settle, take that time out and recharge a little bit, they've done a great job closing the gap. And they've been a team of runs so far in this first two, or almost two sets played. Uh, see if they can close the gap here. It's at a five point cushion right now for them to try to chip away at, but they're gonna have to deal with a strong serving sub here for the Marauders. So back out of the timeout. Off the block, Isaiah Meemer will deliver for Saskatchewan in big, long, lanky Jack Magoo on the serve. They'll bring Mills back in to present again as that C-ball option in the backcourt swing from the Marauders number nine, but a great service run by the Marauders as Thomas Williams comes in and gets the job done. And Saskatchewan not going to do themselves any favors with service errors at a critical part of the second, and it's 23-18, and McMaster will look, Kyle, to Cooper to close. Two points to push here for the Marauders. They're up 23-18. to We'll see. They're going to probably give a full green light here to Cooper in terms of trying to swing away on the surf. Cooper spins one over. Short set defended well by Ragosi as Buchanan tried, and then Mortensen wins the net battle, and back it goes to Saskatchewan. Yeah, a little tight in there as Cry just tries to go to forearms there to try to stay in system. A tough break, kind of rolled off his arms there in tight to the tape, and really tough to navigate, and Mortensen just so much experience and talent on the other side of the net, able just to send it back into the open floor the other way. So Mortensen on the serve. Fujisawa, Ladarski, and it is set point for McMaster. And the push coming inside, you see the middle block closing late to the outside there from the Huskies as they were trying to maybe commit a little bit to trying to uh, frame the option that Cry was presenting. Um, and then gets to the outside, Ladarski does an excellent job swinging away and finding the floor, and it's now set point. So Cry to finish set number two. Handled awkwardly by Mills, and McMaster will get it over with Cry. Short set in the middle, oh, off the block. It almost was able to sneak in, but well done by Quinn Buchanan in the middle. Great block timing there by Pavlik, able to time it perfectly with the run out of the middle to Buchanan. Maybe didn't get that outside hand framed a little bit into the court as much, but Buchanan does a good job finding high hands on the block and hitting it out of play after that. Oh, Mamer will send it long, and set number two belongs to the home side, 25 to 20. McMaster leads 2-0, Kyle, and looks to close it out in the third. Things going the way of the Marauders through the first two sets. They've done a great job in all three aspects of the game, whether it be their attack, whether it be their defense, and their serving. We'll see what happens, if what adjustments Sass can make heading into the third. Third set coming up after this on CBC Sports.
This season, catch the best in Atlantic University sport excitement at home or on the go with AUS TV. Soccer, rugby, football, volleyball, hockey, basketball, and more. Tune in at AUSTV.ca. All your favorite university teams showcasing their talents in one place. AUS TV, powered by Bell Alliance. They bring it to the court. They bring it to the field. They bring it to the ice. And now they bring it to you. Presented by Subway, the official fuel of Atlantic University sport. Get the stories behind the glory. Watch, listen, stream, read CBC Sports. Hey, you sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visitez le shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. Might be a little bit of a surprise to see McMaster up 2-0 on... Saskatchewan, 25-19, 25-20, but the Marauders kept that pace that they'd set in the first, Kyle, continued it in the second, and Saskatchewan, looking for answers, didn't have all the answers. No, and they've had some great moments throughout the first two sets in terms of stringing together some runs where they've gone on maybe, you know, a couple of three or four point runs at different junctures throughout the first two sets. But ultimately, the Marauders have been the more consistent group through the first two sets. They've been able to navigate a little bit more in terms of the balance of their offense so far. And we've talked a lot on the air so far, Steve, about how well the Marauders have played at the net in terms of their blocking and being able to mitigate some of the offensive presence that the Huskies possess. Uh, great first two sets by McMaster, and they'll look to try to cruise in here and, and put this one away and not allow the Huskies to fight back. But, Steve, we talked a lot about Saskatchewan in terms of how they've gotten to this point in their season. And we talked yesterday to head coach Sean McKay about the build-up in terms of the Canada West playoffs. And there were maybe three or four times throughout that where their season was on the line in the quarterfinals, the semifinals, uh, and then ultimately to try to get into that Canada West bronze medal game as well. And they even came from behind in the bronze medal game as they trailed one nothing and came back with one three in a row. Levi Olson subbed out in the second set, and he's found himself on the negative side in terms of kill percentage, and that's stunning. Yeah, not a great start there for Olsen, but see if he can navigate his way back in and take that time when he was on the bench to sort of recharge. He's an outstanding, he's an excellent player, a huge part of the success of this Huskies team this season, and we can, I think we can expect Olsen to get his way back into the game here. But yeah, through the first two sets, only two kills with five attacking errors on 13 total attacks. Uh, Quinn Buchanan attacking at a 500% clip out of the middle for the Huskies, but hitting as a team only at 115 to the Marauders team clip at 308 through two sets. It's an outstanding number for McMaster attacking. Olsen and Mortensen had 813 kills between them this season, and that includes the playoffs. Brendan Mills attacking at 400 from the opposite through two sets. Seven kills, only one error on 15 total attacks. Lodarski kicking off set number three. Smith on the return. And that one is sent wide. Memer a little bit too much steam on that one, it looked like. And Mamer trying to go outside or maybe over top of the block with the Marauders continuing to implement that triple to the outside. It's a tough piece to navigate. Again, as we said, there's so much height at the net and so much blocking talent for McMaster, but especially when they close with that triple block. And Ladarski looked a little bit off balance when he delivered that serve. We're tied at one in the third. Serving pressure continuing to be a factor for the Marauders. Those, I don't imagine they're going to move away from the aggressiveness that they have on their serve. A little confusion at the table, but it's a big piece of the McMaster identity from the service line. So they'll continue to try to navigate that service pressure here. So Dylan Mortensen will serve. And uncharacteristic of Olsen to misfire on a serve. Back it goes to McMaster. Yeah, trading service errors as Mortensen unable to get full contact on that one. Again, trying to find something in terms of the serve receive that he can exploit, but not great contact on that one. We'll see what Pavlik can do from the line this time. Levi Olsen back on the floor for Saskatchewan. We'll see if he can get untracked. They go into the middle, well defended. Fujisawa outstanding. 
This time they go Martinson and off the block. Cooper got a hand on it, not nearly enough though. Great job by Ethan Smith on that road, on that sequence there. Back to back points through, or sequences throughout that rotation and that rally where he had to be strong with his hands in terms of keeping the ball alive and did a great job there for Saskatchewan. Niemer has Kirkhoff diving on the return. Cooper just flew through the air and used the left hand that time. Get a look inside to the tape there as the set comes off the hands of Fujisawa. We've seen Cooper make those adjustments a couple times in the game where he was, I think he finished off the first set that way where he was able to navigate from right to left and just press off the block and earn the point. Brendan Mills, great diving return by Smith and Mortensen. Matthew Ragosi returns the dive and then Mills whiffed on it and it's 3-3. Ragosi with a good pick up there though. I'm trying to keep that one alive for the Marauders. Point does go to the Huskies. It's interesting to see as the Marauders continue to operate the two libero system between Ragosi and Kirkhoff. One maybe a specialist in, in serve receive here as we see Kirkhoff back in, and Ragosi maybe navigating as we see the switch coming back in again. Ragosi more of the defensive libero, and Kirkhoff more of the serve receive libero. Buchanan serves one long, and Cooper will serve for McMaster with his team leading 4 3 in the third. See if Cooper goes power. Took a little something off of it. Mortensen. Here's Ledarski. Smith diving. Olsen, and that time Olsen delivers, and he'll be happy to move towards the plus side in the statistics. Great job by Olsen to swing with some speed on that shoulder coming across as he saw the Marauders block closing and trying to navigate and get over there. But Olsen does a good job rotating with some speed and able to get that ball hit quickly. Southpaw Jacob wrapping on the serve. Ladarski couldn't really set it up for the kill like he wanted to there. Olsen gets blocked. Boy, Cry was right there along with Fujisawa. Cry coming across and anchoring that block alongside Fujisawa. Sort of an out of system ball set to the left side where it allowed the Marauders some time to get over there and close up on that block as they take the lead up 5-4. Cry on the serve, short set for Magoo. Good handle on received by the Huskies and they run it into Magoo who does a great job cutting to the outside and angling into position one and finds a spot on the open floor. Good attack there out of the middle by the Huskies to see if they can keep the pace pushed here. Olsen with the serve. Short set. And that's found money for Pavlik. And he buries one. Yeah, great run out of the middle for the Marauders. Just a textbook finish there by McMaster. Good pass on receive. Fujisawa runs out of the middle and a good attack to finish it off. Fujisawa serving. It was his serve as Magoo off the block. Well tied at six, it was Fujisawa's serve that separated McMaster from Saskatchewan in the second. Magoo is six foot nine and he's all arms and legs. A sizable young man. <laughs> Great play by Ladarski to improvise a little bit and give McMaster the lead back. Good find again by Vladarski, this time on the right side. He spent a lot of time on the right side throughout his time here with the Marauders. So very familiar when he gets stuck, not stuck, but in that position where he's swinging for part of the rotation on the right. They take the lead up 7-6. And here's Vladarski on the serve. Rappin, Martinson, and Cooper was up. So after Mortensen had the throw tip off the block, it came back and hit him on the way out. But looking up at the scoreboard, Steve, seeing the combination there of Mills and Pavlik and Cooper at 12, 11, and 15 points respectively so far. It's great to see trip or double digits within three guys on the floor right now. Here's Ladarski, another powerful serve. Rapin sets it up in the middle for Buchanan and McMaster. We'll keep it going. 
on the right side. Thundering hit by Mamer. And McMaster ducking. And Mayburn just finding a lot of pace and really using his entire body to kind of generate the momentum and the torque to get through that ball and really just tees off on one, paints that back corner. It's a much needed point there for the Huskies as they're back within one. Here's Mortensen back on serve. Fujisawa, Cooper. It's taken off the net. The point is still going. Both coaches are unhappy, and the point will belong to Saskatchewan. And surely it was felt that there was a violation committed by the Huskies, and it's an unhappy McMaster sideline. Yeah, lots of process there in terms of the, the, the rally that was happening and the length in which it was rolling through. And, you know, Mills wisely leaving that ball that was coming close to the tape and then thought it was a lift coming off the net, and that kind of got the Marauders off throughout the rest of the rally the way through and then the Huskies arguing calls on the other side as now you see Coach Preston still arguing with the down official here trying to get some clarity but a bit of a sloppy sequence from both sides there. Cooper, good defense by Smith. Here's Mamer. Off the net to not much that Pavlik could do with that and is this the opening that the Huskies need here in set number three? We need to try to harness it here now, and we see, you know, continuing the service run here as a Dave Preston going to take a timeout here for McMaster and settle things down a little bit. A three-point run back for the Huskies. It was 8-6 for the Marauders. Now a 9-8 advantage back the other way for Saskatchewan. But I think just a maybe a, a tactical reset here for the Marauders and maybe talking things over after being a little frustrated with not getting the call that went their way or th went against them two points back. First time that McMaster has utilized a timeout here this evening, showing you how successful that they have been. But that that point with all the controversy, it was a strange point because McMaster felt they had won the point. At one point, Saskatchewan looked like they had started to celebrate a point and realized that they were still in it. But credit to the Huskies, who were the ones who kept their composure and got that point in the end. And they desperately need a break or two if they want to get back in this one. We'll see if they can continue to push here. Again, they forced the Marauders into taking a timeout and they have a lead here. It's still early on in the set for sure, but it's a good thing to kind of clutch onto right now is they've been able to have another one of their sort of three, four point runs that they've been able to generate so far throughout the first two sets. Let's see if they can continue that now and maybe create some further separation here and they still have Mortensen from the service line and certainly now have three attacking or four attacking options when you consider the pipe and the sea ball that Mortensen presents out of the back row. So Mortensen on the serve, clips the net and a good diving play by Kirkhoff. Cooper! And that is Saskatchewan's defense stepping up. Rappin and Buchanan. Saw Cooper get a little bit handcuffed in terms of his approach there as it was a little bit off the net on the set from Fujisawa and Cooper had to sort of do a little stutter step in his approach leading up to contact. Allowed a little bit extra time for the block to get set and a great job reading there by Saskatchewan. Mortensen does nothing fancy on the serve. Cooper. They'll try with Mills, and boy, Saskatchewan. Great scramble in Mills. Oh, what a play. And it's Saskatchewan with the point. Levi Olsen with the great defense. Buchanan with the finish. Not much more you can do there for the Marauders. They did everything properly in terms of their attack at the net, but full credit goes to the sellout defensively for the, or excuse me, for the Huskies. And we talked about Levi Olsen maybe struggling a little bit uh, so far in this match, but what an outstanding point to hang on to there for Olsen. That's the service error there from Mortensen, but Olsen, a huge catalyst in that defensive stand there by the Huskies. And we'll try to continue to take advantage of that and create some separation here in the third set. Great job by Olsen. And Mortensen was really hoping to put an exclamation point on for Saskatchewan to continue that run. It's 11-9 Saskatchewan, and it's... Tyler Pavlik on the serve. They set it up in the middle and cry with a nice block off of Buchanan. They'll go to Buchanan again and Cooper there. Another block by Cry. Here's Martinson. Another block. McMaster's defense. Outstanding. 
Winding in Sam Cooper finishes with a block. Seeing an absolutely incredible display of blocking at the net between both sides in this game, and especially the last three or four points in particular. The Marauders just staying honest at the net, doing a great job closing there, and that can steal some points back for them. Maybe take this momentum back of the short serve there from Pavlik. But what a great job at the net that we've seen from both sides here, and the Marauders in particular on that last sequence through. Stemmed the momentum temporarily from Saskatchewan as Isaiah Mamer, the first year kinesiology student, six foot four, on the serve with power. Mills, well defended, Olsen a part of it. Cooper, net battle, and it's McMaster with the opportunity, and it's a short set for Voge Cry. Seeing Olsen hobble here a little bit, Steve, as it's going up for that block. I think he came down and maybe tweaked it a little bit as he saw him kind of rolling off to the side. And I think he's going to maybe have to come out for a little bit here and try to reset. It's a tough, tough break there for Olsen as he was again laying it all out there from the defensive side in the last couple sequences there. But just clipped it a little bit on the roll coming down from the block and kind of vacated that blocking option to the right side the rest of the rally through there. So again, a tough break there for Olsen. He's a pivotal part of this team and hopefully he's going to be okay and can get back in. But kind of rolled his ankle pretty hard there on the block coming down. He looked in a great degree of discomfort as he almost looked like he stumbled a little bit when he was trying to get up. So certainly one to keep an eye on as he's on the training table right now. Here's Mills. Big serve. Back set, Mamer, and another block! Well, McMaster standing tall on defense as they continue to withstand the Saskatchewan attack. Good close again on the triple block there by Cooper, knowing that there's really only going to be one side as the Huskies take a timeout here, but really only one location that Rappin was able to go there as the sea ball was not an option on that sequence through. Left side was kind of trapped already, so that was the only spot where it was going to go, and Rappin moving that far over, and we knew that it was going to be pushed to that left side. So Cooper identifying that, seeing it through the net, being in already kind of relatively neutral to the middle of the court, was able to close in a hurry, taking away an additional attacking option in terms of the sight line of the left side attack there from the Huskies, and we're tied at 12. So now the concern for Saskatchewan is on Levi Olsen, who continues to get worked on at the training table right now, and can't say enough about this McMaster defense that we've been talking about all evening long. They continue just to repel attack after attack from Saskatchewan. Yeah, it's been outstanding to watch, and it's been a huge part we've saw and talked a lot about what they have from an offensive standpoint, but it's been their defense that has been as equally impressive so far here tonight, whether it be staying the course through long rallies, whether it was their blocking scheme and trying to mitigate the effectiveness of some of the attackers for the Huskies, or just their block reading and being able to get up, get the timing there, and utilize the height advantages that they have at the net, and earning points in all three facets, Steve. It's impressive to watch for McMaster, and a tough break for Olsen and the Huskies, as I can't imagine we're going to see him back here tonight. He's getting that ankle taped up as we speak right now. Out of the timeout, 12-12. And it's Mills on the serve. Great pancake by Smith. And left side, Emmett Graham again with the left hand. He is Olsen's replacement, and he has performed admirably. Great pass, though, on serve receive here by the Huskies. It maybe caught the serve receive a little bit short, but able to actually generate a little bit of pace on that ball coming in. It was low to the ground and really came in fast to Rappin's hands. Was able to find it to the outside, and just the adjustment there by Graham to come cross court. Buchanan on the serve. Fujisawa back set, and Ladarski takes a safe approach. In the middle, Magoo finds a hole in the back of the McMaster defense. Continuing to get the middle involved here is going to be pivotal for the Huskies. They can sometimes get into a spot where they're setting one pin over another. Being able to bring that middle option is going to help the Huskies to try to close out this third set. Fujisawa for Cooper, and he tries to go cross court and buried it into the net. An attacking error that time from Cooper, but again, had to try to navigate around the block that was set. Timeout taken here by the Marauders. It's a three-point edge. 
in the latest juncture of the set, Steve, that we've seen the Huskies in the lead. So we'll see what the Marauders can do. Trailing by three as we approach sort of that two-third juncture of the set. Trailing 15 to 12. Again, just trying to talk. Maybe a few simple adjustments here as the Huskies have been able to generate success over the last five, six, seven points. Um, but again, won't be too many adjustments as things are clicking quite well for the Marauders through two and a half sets so far. Too early to spend that last time out for McMaster? Do you think it was the right time? No, it was the right time. I think Coach Preston obviously has been in this situation a ton and knows his guys and knows what they need to do in terms of uh, trying to stall any progress that's being made here by the Huskies. Would you want another timeout maybe later on if we have the same sort of three-point cushion at 22-19? For sure. But at the same time, it, you know, knowing what his players need, knowing the message they need to receive, and even just getting a 30-second breather uh, after what's been you know, a couple of high-energy points on both sides of the net, certainly the right time to settle it down here for Coach Preston and see if they can side out here. A loud crowd in excess of 2,000 people filling the Burge Gymnasium. Starting to make some noise for Quinn Buchanan's serve, and it's a service error. It'll go back to McMaster at 15 to 13. We'll call that one another coach's point there as they sort of freeze the serve from the line, allow them to think a little bit about it, maybe go through the mechanics more so than they're used to. Good point earned back the other way on the side out and the service error for the Marauders, and now they get Cooper back to the line. Try to steal a couple back. Cooper, big high toss, big serve. Big time ace just when McMaster needed it. We talked about the service pressure piece, and there's no one that does it more than Sam Cooper. He just hits such a hard ball, and the toss that he's able to get up and the, the height that he's able to jump up with is so pivotal in terms of getting the pace on that ball, and not too many others in the country that can do it like Sam Cooper. Cooper, that one just long. It had a, a real late dip on it, and it didn't dip quick enough. That's again, so tough to navigate in terms of, you know, you try to think about identifying a serve when it reaches your own attack line, but that move, ball's moving so fast. Good decision to leave it there, though, by the Huskies. Jake wrapping on the serve. Mills. It has been Brendan Mills evening so far, and it continues. Great set selection that time by Fujisawa. He had a number of options. He saw the pipe attack from Sam Cooper presenting as an option as well, as he was coming to the inside of where the set was going to be coming from. But a good run for sure to send it to Mills on, this, on the right side. And now we'll, we'll come out and get another service sub here as Williams comes in for the Marauders. Peter Ragosi, big serve, Smith. Got it, short set, Magoo. And Magoo has been very effective when set up here in set number three. Yeah, good side out there by the Huskies. Again, they were generated the lead and they're more than happy to kind of trade points with the Marauders over the next little bit and get this to the last juncture of that, you know, first to 20 type mentality. And then pressure certainly picks up from there, but they're more than happy to trade right now, but they give one right back. That's Emmett Graham, the lefty who come came in to replace Levi Olson, who is testing out that ankle on the sideline. It's been heavily taped, and now he is walking, not quite as gingerly as he was before. Fujisawa floats a serve over. Set up for Mortensen. Matthew Ragosi did well. Off the block, it is Mateusz Ladarski. Outstanding job on that attack by Vladarski. Again, from that left side, he's able to allow the ball to come across his body. Not force on the angle to try to go cross and hard to the other way. But he's able to allow the ball to do the work, come across the face of his body, and adjust off the hands. Great job by Vladarski. So McMaster pulled away from Saskatchewan in set number two with Fujisawa's serve. They'll try and do it again. And that time off the block on the second opportunity, Isaiah Mamer gets it back to Saskatchewan. McMaster called on the net as well. We're going to get another substitution incoming here for the Huskies. As we're going to see Jay Eckers come in. Maybe go back to the service line here for Magoo. As the Huskies have a one-point advantage here. You see some fanfare in the crowd there for Eckers as he comes in to serve and try to create some late set separation here for Saskatchewan. And what a moment for Eckers to come in. 
Fujisawa. Here's Mills. And Brendan Mills, he has just been brilliant time and time again. We're tied at 18. Just a hard cross shot there by Brendan Mills, able to adjust to the outside of the block and just paints that tee over on the side where that sideline is painting and mixing in with that attack line. Just a good find there by Mills overall. We're tied at 18. Ladarski, short set. And that was misfired by Buchanan. And McMaster has a lead now, 19 to 18, and this is a critical juncture. We do, we'll see perhaps if Olsen does come back into the match here. Probably see Saskatchewan want to try to push through a fourth before that thought comes across. Short set and Buchanan with that windmill style, an undersized middle, tied at 19. Olsen is standing. Hoping that his number is called as Dylan Mortensen will serve. <coughs> Kirkhoff, Fujisawa, Cooper. Pavlik, Fujisawa, Cooper with power this time. Back set for Mortensen. He's a little off balance. Good diving play. Fujisawa, Cooper into the heart of the defense and a good diving play by Mortensen. Kirkhoff. Cooper to finish, and Cooper does finish, and it's 2019, McMaster. Here's the replay of that last attack as Cooper, just so difficult to try to navigate in the air and anything that the block can try to do on that, but Cooper does an excellent job being able to angle and go hard cross and take advantage of his physical mismatch that he may present, but excellent job by Cooper. The Marauders are back in the lead. Pavlik. Pivotal point, short set in the middle. Buchanan couldn't deliver, and it's 21-19 timeout coming for Saskatchewan. Good block read there by Woj Cry as he's able to see and navigate and find that piece all the way through, anticipating a set that they would try to exploit and try to get the middle involved there. But Cry answers the call. Great job on the block there by Woj Cry. And that's the last of the timeouts for both teams. McMaster looking to close out Saskatchewan in three. The winner will face the winner of our next matchup between the Montreal Caravan and the Trinity Western Spartans. Alberta have already booked a spot in the semifinal. They'll play Sherbrooke, and that'll be an outstanding matchup as well. Yeah, it certainly be a contrast of styles. We talked to some of the all the coaches yesterday, Steve, and we talked about how Sherbrooke may be a little bit undersized, but have a lot in terms of their skill set and their technique and a lot of tactical installation and certainly going to go up against a, an Alberta side that has so much firepower. Not to take away the fact that they obviously have a lot of skill set and tactics as well, uh, but it will certainly be a little bit of a contrast of styles for sure. So it'll be an exciting matchup there. And then the winner of this one taking on the winner of Trinity and Montreal will set up and, and also a second outstanding semifinal tomorrow night. Tyler Pavlik out of the timeout on the service line for McMaster. Here's Martinson. Is it long? It's long. It didn't hit any Marauder. And the McMaster Marauders are three points away from a quarterfinal victory. Good set to the outside, and the approach and the release there from Mortensen was great all the way through. Tried to find contact on the top of the hands, didn't get enough snap as it drifted out the back. But a good run nonetheless. Pavlik has been very effective with this serve. That one clipped the net. Short set in the middle into the net. 23-19. And McMaster and this great crowd can feel it. Set too low on the set there from Rappin as he was unable to try to get and run the middle and try to get uh, try to get Quinn Buchanan up a little bit higher. The set was just a little bit too low and unable to convert on the attack there out of the middle from Buchanan. Two points to push here. So we're going to get a reserve. Maybe a ball drifted towards the floor. 
But yeah, 23-19 here for McMaster and trying to close this one out, Steve. All Levi Olsen right now can do is watch from the sideline for his Saskatchewan Huskies. And Pavlik goes for the big serve and it's back to Saskatchewan at 23-20. A little unorthodox on the serve there from Pavlik because it didn't really spin or float. It was kind of in that little hybrid space and kind of didn't really get the contact maybe he was looking for on that. Back to within three though with the Huskies. They got a push here. Isaiah Mamer on the serve. He goes for a big serve. Here's Cooper. And it is match point for McMaster. And I have a feeling, well, they're going to turn to Brendan Mills. I thought they were going to go to Cooper. They're standing at the Birds Gymnasium. Great sell in the middle, though, by Woj Cry on that last point, Steve. They had obviously give full credit to Cooper for being able to convert, but was unable to get that much access in terms of different lanes to attack from without the middle selling and keeping the middle block honest. Thomas Williams. McMaster for the win. Cooper to finish, and it's denied. Mills off the block. McMaster is off to the semi-final. The hometown team delivers a treat and a three-game sweep of the Saskatchewan Huskies. 25-20 in the third set after 25-19 and 25-20. An impressive performance. Great job by both sides here, but the Marauders were the better team here tonight and really sort of imposed their will, as we mentioned, in sort of three different dimensions, Steve. They were strong at times when they needed to be from the service line. They obviously have such a great attack, but I think their defense and their blocking tonight was the major difference in the separation between these two sides. The outstanding career of Levi Olsen will unfortunately end on the sidelines as McMaster will head to the semifinal and await the winner of Trinity Western and Montreal. A little bit of a surprise, I would say. But one surprise I don't think that we can talk about, Steve, is the fact that Brendan Mills was named the McMaster player of the game, as we'll sort of announce here in a second to the rest of our crowd. But for those that are listening, we talked about Mills a lot on the broadcast, and he was spectacular for the Marauders here tonight. And on the other side, Quinn Buchanan, the middle for Saskatchewan, was someone who was certainly keeping them afloat all the way through here. And 25-20 in the third set, as we said, it. The Huskies had some great moments here tonight. They obviously have some great personnel and some individuals that were recognized as such for their strong seasons. So we'll get another look at the point that won it. And actually, Steve, I think it was Williams out yeah, of the back row. it was Thomas row. Williams who, who came in to serve for the final That's points. Right. And what a moment for Thomas Williams and for the McMaster Marauders and Dave Preston continues in his quest to end his great career with a national championship. Yeah, and again, an outstanding performance here by the Marauders, and there were some, some really good moments, as we saw, from the green and white from Saskatchewan. Uh, and like we talked about throughout the match, they had junctures throughout each of the three sets where they were able to find success and looked as though they were going to be able to play their way back in. Um, but in the end, sort of a multifaceted, multi-dimensional approach to the game here tonight for the Marauders is why they were able to generate so much success. We know that they were going to be successful in terms of running their offense. They are able to steal points from the service line for sure, but again, their defense and their uh, blocking was huge tonight. Macassa players of the game will be announced. We've already kind of tipped our hand and offered up a spoiler on those as it's Brendan Mills for McMaster and Quinn Buchanan for Saskatchewan and a impressive performance by the McMaster Marauders under the most pressure packed of circumstances. McMaster in a sweep and now they get to sit and see who they face if it's Trinity Western well there's a whole narrative written as Trinity Western has knocked McMaster out I think the last five years it seems or four out of the last five years yeah they'll certainly want to be maybe they had that idea in their heads and maybe seeing and, and once they saw the bracket maybe seeing that there was the potential for them to focus on maybe see Trinity Western in a semi-final but obviously nobody wants to look past their current opponent and the, and the Spartans certainly don't want to be doing that as Quinn Buchanan comes to get his player of the game recognition but yeah, certainly that narrative, as we said, would 
would be something interesting to, to dive into later on, but we'll obviously uh, have to wait and see how things unfold between Trinity and Montreal. Well, the seeds have held so far here on day one of the U Sports Volleyball Men's Championship. McMaster is through. They'll play the winner of our final matchup of day one, Trinity Western, the Montreal Caravan. And we'll be back with that one half an hour or so. You've been watching U Sports Men's Volleyball on CBC Sports.